good afternoon, everyone, and hello. Welcome to the Senior Living 411 series on excellence in senior care. Today, I am proud to have with me Keisha Johnson. Keisha is serving a second term as president of the A Supreme Foundation. She's an advocate for honoring the dignity of human life and empowering others to thrive. Keisha has championed the mandate of the A Supreme Foundation to improve the quality of life for seniors. In 2017, she coined the Buy Some Time campaign through which donors finance in-home care for seniors through which who are in, unable to care for themselves. Keisha is a communication strategist with over 15 years experience in media and corporate communications. She's also a director at Global Media and Communications Corporation, and she's an accomplished magazine publisher, book editor, columnist, and digital media producer and host. Welcome, Keisha, and how are you today? I am excellent, Desiree, and thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your program. It's really That's great okay. to be here. Thank you, Keisha. Now, Keisha, we, we just read your bio and it's loaded with a lot of things. So today, let's just focus in on the A Supreme Foundation. Uh, what prompted you to join that organization as your organization of, of one of your organizations of choice? I, I, I well, I, I <laughs> it's an interesting story. I think I was, um, I was kind of thrown into the organization in a sense, but um, I had the awesome privilege of interviewing the founders of A Supreme, both A Supreme Nursing and A Supreme Foundation. And I have to give kudos to those three ladies. I'll just mention them right now. Yeah. Vivian Duet, Vivian Dixon, and Winsome Johnson. And I had a show called Living the Dream in Canada and oh. interview them on, their, on the show. And they just have such an amazing story. And that's how we uh, got to know each other. And out of that, they invited me to be a part of their foundation. Mm -hmm. And the meeting I was invited to was the AGM. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And the next thing I know was my name was being put forward for president. Right, you know? right. And it's interesting, but that's how I got started with the organization. I have to give a disclaimer. My husband was serving on the board of that organization before as well. Okay. So it was, it was a natural fit um, with my yeah. interest in, you know, as you mentioned in my bio, this whole idea of supporting people and um, recognizing that because we're human beings, we all deserve to be treated with dignity. That's part of my mandate as a person. And exactly. so because of the nature of the organization and what they do in caring, especially for um, vulnerable seniors and standing in the gap for them, it was just a natural fit for me to um, mm. be a part of the organization and to serve mm. with them the way I have been in the past three years. And definitely we give you kudos. We hear all the time on the news about seniors who are starving seniors who can't afford care, so many different realms where they have needs. So definitely kudos yes. to you and the A Supreme Foundation for doing that. And, and how long have you been a part of the A Supreme Foundation? I think it's been three years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, I, I think it's been about three years since I've been involved with the organization. We're in 2020. So I started with them in 2017. Okay. I think it was our late 2016, sometime there. Okay. Okay. And before we delve more into the programs, can you give us a little bit of history, a little bit of background? You mentioned three ladies. Give us a little bit of background on the A Supreme Foundation itself. Oh, absolutely. So it's it's really an amazing story. Um, the three founders, as I mentioned, Vivian Dixon, Vivian Duet, and Winsome Johnson, they are the founders of A Supreme Nursing and Home Care Agency. And um, the story behind A Supreme Foundation is that they were receiving, as a for-profit company, uh, they started getting a lot of calls um, from seniors who said, you know, we need help. We need in-home care. We need all of this help. Um, can you come in and help us? And they said to them, you know, they were explaining, this is a paid service. But my understanding is that people were saying to them, listen, the government told us to call you, right? And I guess the reason for that was uh, the, the, the support that the government provides is, is clearly not adequate for those people who especially are, you know, yeah. um, not able to help themselves as yeah. much. And so um, I think there was one caller who was especially persistent and they decided to send um, a nurse over in a PSW. And when they went to assess the situation, they mm -hmm. found this gentleman, an elderly gentleman who had both legs amputated and his mom, his senior mom was mm -hmm. also with him. 
and she also had both legs amputated and they were kind of they're, 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 you can imagine their environment was not the best yeah. um not well kept at all and stuff and so i recall the 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 staff member who went to do this assessment called by the office and said, listen, even if you guys don't pay me, I will have to help these people. Mm -hmm. And so we found that that need was, was not uncommon. And we were talking about the greater Toronto area, you mm -hmm. know? And so out of that, they decided that they would create a foundation so that they're able to assist low income, vulnerable seniors who cannot afford to care for themselves or the adequate that care that they need to live with dignity. And so that's the, the, the whole um, story of how the foundation came to, be. Oh, came to be. And definitely, I know I do see, I mean, the cost of those who don't know, uh, private home care for someone who needs uh, assistance with meals or even bathing, that type of thing, once you go through the government wind of it, it's gonna cost you at least probably $25, $30 an hour. And, and you know, some places have a minimum time. So definitely, again, that adds up if someone needs more extensive care. So I can definitely see where that passion came from. And, and what does the name A Supreme stand for? Is there a meaning behind the name A Supreme? <laughs> you know there is a meaning behind the name. And I'm standing in the gap. <laughs> I'm yes. standing in the gap for the founders who came up with the name. Um, I think it was Vivian um, Dixon who came up with the name A Supreme. And mm -hmm. it's, you know she had a time of prayer. And out of that you know came um, Supreme. Um, and that God is supreme and, and, and this work that they're going to be doing, you know, is to the honor of God as well. And so the name A Supreme came, came to be. I hope I'm doing this, this story justice, but yes. that's what I know of it, that it really came out of prayer. And um, so I think it was from God being the supreme being. Yes. And then A Supreme, um, I think, was suggested because, you know, like when you're searching for the name of an organization, if you're doing it, it most things are listed alphabetically. You're right at the top. You don't get missed at all, right? Right. <laughs> right. Wow, that's a powerful name and a powerful mission. And Absolutely. what is Ace Supreme's prime mandate? What's their mandate? Well, really, it's just to assist and support seniors um, to age in place well and to live with dignity. So right. we base, really focus on three main areas. We provide education. So we have workshops, seminars, um, different types of event that will educate the seniors because uh, we find a lot of people suffer because of a lack of knowledge. They don't know. And if you don't know, you don't even know the right questions to ask. You don't know the right places to go to for assistance. And mm -hmm. so we do host several workshops, seminars, and we do this in collaboration with other stakeholders. So we work with people who are in other, um, maybe health related, maybe a nutritionist, um, but we work with different um, stakeholders who can provide information that will be helpful to the seniors in that large ambit of helping them to live with dignity and to age in place well. So right. the other thing we do is um, we advocate as well against the abuse of seniors and we also provide uh, care support. Uh, we have what we call the uh, Buy Some Time campaign and right. that provides subsidized in-home care through that program, we're able to provide subsidized in-home care for seniors who can't afford that service. So just as how the, found the story that the, the foundation got started on, through mm -hmm. this Buy Some Time campaign, we're able to uh, assist some seniors with additional in-home care. And that's absolutely amazing. I haven't heard of anyone else really doing such a program. So again, and I know that I, in your bio, I read that you coined that, um, that program. I guess just going off topic a bit, what I know you saw the need and whatnot, but buy some time. That's really pretty ingenious. What, what made you think about doing something to that effect? It was the idea that um, all of us are gonna age. <laughs> and I, I, I thought I was, maybe came from the idea of paying it forward. So one, uh, we're asking others to buy some time for seniors who can't afford to pay for the in-home care that they need, right. you know? And so that's just the, 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 the whole idea behind it is that you're buying some time for somebody else. And mm -hmm. so what you do is the contribution covers the cost that of, of the time that it will take um, a, whether it's a nurse or a PSW to go into the home to care for this individual. 
Okay, and we'll definitely uh, share a link to how people can find out more information about all these programs, whether it is to take part or to, to give their time or to buy some time. We will see which one, well, which ones we have. Uh, Keisha, again, we're sitting here. My name is Desiree King. I'm sitting here with Keisha, Keisha Johnson from the A Supreme Foundation, and we're talking about the 411 in excellence in home care. Now, I know that's also a tagline that goes along with the A Supreme logo. Uh, what does excellence in senior care or home care mean to you, Keisha? It is, is for me, it's as explicit as it says, you know, it's excellence in senior care. So we are leaving no stone unturned. Um, I don't think that anybody should, uh, you know, fail to get the quality of service they deserve because they don't have the money to pay for it. And we know everything costs something. There is a, there is a dollar figure attached to just about everything. And yes. so excellence in senior care um, is one, first, not denying anybody service because they're not able to pay for it. Two, it's treating everybody with the dignity they deserve. So I'm going to treat you like you're a member of my biological family. I'm gonna give you the best of care. And it's interesting when you hear the testimonials from the seniors who have received care through a Supreme Foundation and even through the agency, a lot of them speak to the quality of care, the respect, yeah. the manner in which they are treated you know, yeah. by the staff. And, and, and I'm so happy that that is living true. It's not just a tagline, but it is a reality of their experience. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. And again, we hear the opposite of it sometimes where they don't get that excellence in care and they're often forgotten. It's one of the reasons why I came into the senior industry is because although they've, they've been around for so long, they're often swept under the rug because they're considered no longer, I guess, for lack of a better word, productive members. So yeah. there have to be people, as you say, who I like that phrase, stand in the gap. Yes. to ensure because we're all going to get there. Either you're going to die or you're going to get there, but either which way, as long as you're alive, you're going to get old. And I don't think a lot of uh, younger people realize that. So we definitely have to set the path for what our futures will look like as well. Uh, can you now with, with COVID, I mean, everyone has been affected by COVID and so much more for the more vulnerable of seniors. Um, is there anything that the Supreme Foundation is doing during this time of, of, of dire need for seniors in need? Yes, we are. We have a uh, food program. We have partnered with the African Food Basket with their Toronto uh, Food Initiative. And uh, through that program, we are providing uh, food, in particular fruits and vegetables, um, mm -hmm. culturally relevant food, we call it, to uh, members of the senior community. Um, we have targeted this specifically to the African, you know, people of African, Canadian, Caribbean um, descent. Um, not that we won't serve others because whomever comes with a need, you know, we will definitely um, supply them with, 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 with the ba food baskets as long as we have the capacity to do so. So right. we, uh, our target is to cover at least um, 1200 seniors wow. within the next two, um, two and a half months. Mm -hmm. uh, we started a distribution last week in September. We're in our third week. I'm, I mean, last week in August, pardon me. We are in our third week and our goal is to provide 75 baskets to seniors um, across the GTA. And um, I'm very happy that, you know, the word is getting out there and yes. people are reaching out to us um, yes. so that we're able to provide it. And we have to say, uh, we're able to do that through partial funding from the government of Canada through the okay. Emergency Community um, Fund. Okay. Yes. yes, I heard about that in the news. That's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And is there a geographic area that you're covering? No, the, the, the Greater Toronto area. So, you know, all somebody needs to do, they can go onto our website, they can reach out to us by email, um, or they can give us a call. The numbers are there on the website as well. But send us an email, it's the quickest way to get to us. And right. um, just indicate that you, whether you want to support, because you can also donate to that project as well. As mm -hmm. you, if you have a need, let us know. We will uh, contact you, register you for the program and um, send out the baskets. We deliver uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Those are the days that deliveries are done. Mm -hmm. And um, just reach out if we can assist. We'll definitely make the effort to do that. And I really want to give kudos to the African Food Basket for partnering with us for this initiative because yes. they do the packaging of the foods and we collaborate on the distribution with get, you know, getting it into the hands of the seniors. Right, right. And they work out of, uh, is it Black Creek, that area, the farming? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, they have a, a farm in that area as well. And then their packing is, I'm okay. sorry, I'm not very familiar with 
the whole okay. question. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's that's the area that they are out of. And you know, the baskets are like I say, it's it's culturally sensitive food, but it's also nutritious food and organic because and growing. organic. And they're getting about um, thirteen different items in that basket. Oh. That basket could oh. easily, you know, serve mm -hmm. uh, a family of three or four for a, a week or two weeks, you know, depending on how people eat, but they're getting fruits, they're getting fresh fruits and, and, and vegetables with the nutrients that they need to yeah. supplement their bodies at this time. Yeah, and that's such an awesome way to give. I remember my grandmother in Shredad, she would always prepare meals for others who didn't have or prepare food or whatever came from the garden and send it to them. So it's, it's a way, although we're in a bigger country, um, it, to still give back and to help and to give people what they need, which is basic substance, food. You know, we don't have food, we don't have much else. So we have to start from the basis. And I love how your organization seems to be very grassroots in their approach of, of who they're supporting and what initiatives you're supporting as well. Keisha, you seem to be doing quite a lot with the A Supreme Foundation. What motivates you? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, um, we could, we could get into a long story, but I'll just say, I, I am of the same opinion as the organization. It's my own value about, you know, because you're human, you deserve to be treated with dignity. And um, as a child growing up, my grand aunt who raised me, she always said to me, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I never felt like I'm serving anybody else but him. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you know, it's, it's very easy for me to get involved into anything that recognizes that people deserve to be treated with dignity. And it doesn't, you know, I'll jump through hoops and sacrifice to do that. Because as I said, at the end of the day, it's it's making 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 Christ credible. Right. Because that's what he's about, loving people for yeah. who, just because they are human beings. Definitely. And your passion resonates through this conversation. I'm getting chills <laughs> talking about it. So it does resonate, definitely. Uh, Keisha, what is your favorite quote? Ah, there are lots of those, um, I, but one that my, my daughter would probably, she, she's eight years old and she would probably rattle it off right away because I say it to her too, is never give up is the secret of glory. Mm. Never give up is the secret of glory. Yes, so That's I'm very persistent at things. Don't tell me something can't be done because then that just starts going in my mind. I was like, there is a way, we're gonna find a way. There's got to be a way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and definitely, again, in these times, as we've seen, we're getting through COVID and those who were impacted the most has been seniors. It's great to speak to an, an organization such as the A Supreme Foundation, who we see uh, not only using words as excellence, but they're actually walking the walk, talking the talk and doing the work necessary to give our seniors that excellence in care that they need with dignity. Okay, uh, Keisha, how does, like, another question before you give your contact information. If we have a young person here, we never really think about working for a nonprofit or, or volunteering with a nonprofit. How, what are, I guess, three steps you would give someone in choosing their nonprofit and getting involved to, to volunteer their time or even to work with a nonprofit? Um, if you, it, you know, it comes, if it, it, I, my advice is based on age. Um, if you are, say, a student, for example, and you're looking at getting credits for high school for this, mm -hmm. I would urge you to make sure that it is, it is an organization that you have an interest in what they do. It's something that you're passionate about. Um, and that goes across the board for any age group. Um, if you're going to be volunteering, you want your heart to be in it and you want to be fulfilled in what you're doing as well. And so that's the first thing is to find an organization in which their mandate and what they do, their values resonate with you and you're passionate about it. Um, that's one thing. And then the other thing is, you know, research the organization is as, as, as well. Um, and so, so that you, you feel comfortable that it, it's a fit for you. Yes, you know, because you're you're going to be giving off your time and you want to make sure that it is something that 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 you are not going to be fighting against yourself or anybody else to be able to volunteer off your time, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So just it's make like sure working, it's, it's like working out. You don't have to volunteer. You get to volunteer. You get to volunteer. Example. Yes. So make sure it's something that you're passionate about. Um, um, it might be an era where you want to get some experience that you don't yet have. And so it's an opportunity for you to do that. So while you are giving value to the organization, you're also receiving some value for yourself, but don't be motivated just by what you can get out of it. 
make sure that you are bringing value to that organization as well. Definitely, definitely. Nisha, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, before we go, can you please share with us how do we get in contact with you to find out more, your website and possibly the phone number for the A Supreme Foundation? Okay, absolutely. So it's asupremefoundation.com. That's the website. It's the name of the organization.com, asupremefoundation.com. Um, you can also send us an, an email, very simple, info at asupremefoundation.com. And you can also uh, give us a call, uh, 416-543-2513. That will ring to my number. And, you know, we're happy to connect with you. All right. Thank you again, Keisha. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for the 411 on Excellence in Care. I want to invite everyone for our next show on the 27th of September, where we will be discussing the 411 on health and wellness. Also, for the month of November, when it's Seniors Fall Prevention Month, stay forward. It'll be action-packed. I'll be bringing something special to you every single day for that month so we can really learn more about fall prevention for seniors, which is another area of their life that statistics speak for itself that they're drastically affected from. Once again, thank you again.